Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Adeptus Ridiculous's Book Club. My name is Bricky. My co-host is DK, and we're going to be talking about the books of Warhammer. Before we get started, if you'd like to support our podcast, check out patreon.com slash Ridiculous. And we have all kinds of cool stuff like posters, outtakes, and a major goal at 20,000 for a fantasy episode of Warhammer Fantasy. So check it out. Also, you get access to the Discord. And uh, also, you know, check out the merch store at Orchidate.com. We have beautiful new stuff, including sweatpants that are awesome and cool. But this video does have an ad on it, so I'm going to shut up real quick and roll it. Now, I know all of you are upstanding citizens, and you all made sure to do your very best to pay your taxes. But the stress of taxes takes its toll on all of us, and you might start growing hair in places you didn't think to trim, like the nose and ears. So you need the sponsor of today's video, Manscaped, with their Weed Whacker 2.0. This is a fantastic nose and ear hair trimmer that I would normally be doing this big, lovely unboxing for if I had not already busted it open and used it on multiple occasions. I have brought this thing with me to many trips. I took it to Boston for PAX. I took it to a wedding in Cambria just recently. It is a phenomenal product that does the job very well. It is smooth. I've never had it nick or cause any kind of tugs on me. The blades are a significantly better quality. I feel like they cut really smoothly. And you can always hear that really nice sound when you're cutting hair, that little like when you know you're doing a good job. It's completely cordless. As you can tell, it's extremely easy to recharge and very, very fast. And you can get it with our special discount code. That code is ADRIC, and you can find it in the description to save 20% off and get free shipping from your order. So go check out the description, manscaped.com, code ADRIC, 20% off and free shipping. And thank you very much for sponsoring this video. So DK, have you taken off the sweatpants? Um, no. Hell They're, yeah. They, they are, they are so comfortable. They, it's, it's like walking with a blanket on. Like it's, oh my God, I will die in these. Good. I will die. Bury Ooh. me in the Adeptus Ridiculous sweatpants. <laughs> Bury me in my Adeptus Ridiculous sweatpants. Oh, they're so comfortable. I don't care what design is on them. They're just like, oh my god. I need to think of other designs. It's exciting. Anyway. Mm. So, Master of Mankind. Oh boy. So <laughs> I'm not gonna make any friends this episode. So, okay. So, I, I am curious because... Mm. I think we both agree Mm -hmm. the first two acts are quite the fucking slog. Oh, boy. (laughs) That's an insult to slogs. Um. Did did the third (laughs) act redeem it for you? I think the third act was the strongest. So that's a no. It definitely brought it up, but I, I just don't think it's strong enough to redeem, like the 75% uh, of the other book. It's just, mm, it's, it's a lot to slog through to get to that last part. It's, mm. I was, I was thinking the same where I was like, okay, the question for us is not, is the book, is the book like overly great or anything? Like, is this a 10 out of 10 book for us? Cause we both agree. It's not, it's no. way too much setup, way too much filler. Yeah, it's a lot of filler. I'm I'm also of the opinion that like it is called Master of Mankind, right? So you're <laughs> assuming it is an emperor centric book. It is not. He's it, barely like, in it. He's in it. It's like what, three times? You get it at like the beginning. There's like the middle part where he's like explaining his foresight to Ra, and then there's the ending. It, and, it's three visions and then the ending. Yeah, and it's like I was under the impression I was going to get just all emperor all day. And it's just like, he's barely there. It's so crazy. So, oh, I mean, I try to, I have to adjust how I feel about the book based on what I expected from it and what I got from it. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, I will say that I think the th- the last act, the war in the webway, is pretty darn good. Yeah. Um, because there really isn't any diverging from it. The first two thirds of the act are setting up characters that all play a part at the end, and that's kind of yeah. cool. It's yeah. like the the it's like the everyone is here kind of thing, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's the it's the Smash Brothers. And, and for what it's worth, the war in the webway 
is pretty great. Yeah, it is. I, I, I do like it quite a bit. I found the last two hours of the book to be like pretty darn engaging. Yeah. Yeah. Last two, two or so hours. Pretty good. But yeah, like you said, once the war in the webway starts, it's great. But before that, I, oh boy. I, I kid you not, there were times where I was listening to this, and it's just like, you know how sometimes you, like, rest your hand on your fist, and then you just kind of zone off? I would just, like, snap out of it after, like, two hours and be like, what did I, what did I even just listen to? I, it's just, it's such a tedious slog to get through, like, all of that. Ugh. Yeah, I, I was not enjoying this book at all. That's, that's for unfortunate. The first, for the first eight hours. <laughs> I I was looking up after finishing the book. I was looking up some of the consensus on the book because this came out like uh, six years ago, mm-hmm. I think. Um, oh well, okay. Well, shy shy wants us to do a plot synopsis. Oh, Our, oh yeah, we can do a synopsis. Yeah, in a sense, we kind of already did. It's literally <laughs> just setting up the characters for the war in the webway. That's basically what it is. Yeah, it's it's essentially just like oh hey let's let's introduce thirty characters and then let's have them all fight demons in the webway. Because yeah, the I demons mean, get through because of Magnus's folly. Yeah, it opens with Magnus blowing open the webway, <laughs> which was hol- kind of hilarious. I'm not going to lie when I heard, when I first yeah. got that part. Hashtag um, Magnus did everything wrong. Magnus did so much wrong. So much. And then it basically just interchanges between setting up new characters and Raw, a major custodian, getting visions from the Emperor. Yep. And it bounces between that stuff for about eight to nine hours and then all the characters that were set up and raw is all then thrown into the webway for the major fight. And we get our first taste of the 1000 psyker sacrificed part. Oh yeah. You get, you get, uh, uh you get the uh, first person POV of the thousand sacrifice of the psychers or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That was wildly uncomfortable to listen to. If oh, you were yeah. claustrophobic, that is a bad scene. I mean that uh, to be fair, that is a great description of just how horrible and like weird and horrific it is, especially when it's like, Oh yeah. Some of them were just like in religious fervor and they were just so happy to be where they were and to be sacrificed. And it's like, Ooh, this is, this is, Icky. It is as uncomfortable as it should be. I mean, you are basically put into a coffin and then throughout around 24 hours, you are slowly drained of your life as you have panic attacks and scream and try to get let out. It's pretty fucking awful. Yeah, it's real bad. It's it, uh, which, you know, is, I guess, apt for the situation. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, that. Okay, so what are the characters that are set up? We have uh, the Baron of the of the Night Houses, mm-hmm. Lady, um, who I who I actually kind of enjoyed. Yeah. Oh, I I actually really like when the, Jaya, right? Jaya, yeah. When she showed up, that I I enjoyed that, and then like how uh, uh, they were they were supporting what was it the Emperor's children, but they didn't know it. They were just like they've always been loyal to the Emperor's children. They're like. And they show up in terror, and it's like, what do you mean the Emperor's children are traitors? And it's like, oh, jail. Yeah, they they were their world was saved by the Emperor's children. So the Emperor's children was like, hey, we need your help to fight the Iron Hands. And they're like, okay. And then they realized what they did and, and turned themselves in, basically. Yeah, guilty um, by association. And then their planet was destroyed. Yeah. Uh, which was quite yuck. sad. But it, it was yep. it was her. It was um oh, the name is always tough. Uh Diac Diacles? Diac Di- that sounds right, yeah. Di- Diocles. Di- Diocles? Di- Di- mm-hmm. Dimnasticles? I, uh, it's the custodian, the one that's a real dick. <laughs> They're kind of all... I mean, Ra's the custodian... Okay. Yeah, it's true. The custodians and the emperor are such sanctimonious pricks. <laughs> like, oh a little a little bit. I liked Ra, but, but yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Especially the emperor. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll, we'll get onto that in a, in yeah, a bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then there was the Fabricator General. There was um, the new Admec, like, Uber General. I forget her original name. I think it's sort of an H. Uh, Hel- Hels- Hels- Helsian? Oh, Helsian? Yeah, something and like then she that, became yeah. the Archimandrite. Oh. Um, <laughs> which is a whole thing. <laughs> that's a big thing. That, yeah, well, that's another thing that we'll definitely talk about. You had uh, incredibly based Arkin Land, <laughs> who was my second favorite character in the whole book. 
<laughs> Such a crusty old man. As I, as well he should be. I'm no longer upset about the fact that Arkan Land is the name of the Land Raider. The Land Raider, Arkan Land Raider. I'm I'm okay with that now because Arkan Land was a baller. Mm-hmm. I'll give um, you that. There was a Zephan, the bringer mm-hmm. of sorrow, who was my favorite character in the book. Agreed. I was about to say, as my favorite character, the the blood angel that uh, can't use his weapons anymore, right? Yep. Who has uh, uh who has had all of his limbs cut off by I believe <laughs> Eldar and replaced with bionics that did not properly take. Yep, they didn't take. And uh, after that, it was really just Ra, the Emperor, and so am I missing anyone? It was like the little stint with the Titan, but that was about it. Oh, and then, of, oh, of course, uh, Drachnian. Drachnian, the, the first murder. Which, like, does that make him able? Because I'm pretty sure they talk about, like, it, the, the two brothers, the first one killed in, in murder. Like, I'm pretty sure they're referring to Cain and Abel. Oh, well, I you know, I didn't think about that. I don't know if they were trying to allude that this was Cain and Abel, but I mean. Really? You I could thought... definitely take it that way, sure. I don't think I they specifically said who the first murder was, but yeah, I mean, that works. That Sure. Well, they often talked about it being like when a brother struck down the other brother. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that that sounds like it's a Cain and Abel thing. Um, sure. Also, it, it took the the face of like that warmonger kind of thing at the end. And I was like, is that is that like a biblical thing? Like, eh. I, I thought um, they were just going for a barbarian, like uh, I, I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't even make the religious connection to Cain, Abel, and yeah. So, um, th- I don't know if you know this, but the sword that Abaddon carries mm-hmm. is called Drachnian. Is that where he ends up? Yeah, that's the sword he is using is Drachnian. Oh, yeah. The echo of the first murder, the end of empires, as they always Ooh, keep saying that that's that's a big deal. That, yeah, that's, I, that's I a guess huge deal. I don't know how he turns into it, but if you'll uh, if you'll notice in this paint job here, uh, as said at the end of the episode, the faces of the sword drinking mm-hmm. in the sorrow of the people, you know, yeah, that's Abaddon's hand. That's. I mean, that's 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 a cool little detail, actually. Drachnian. Yeah, yeah. I was like, when they said the name Drachnian about a third of the book, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know that name. Because, man, if Drachnian actually got hold of Abaddon and took over and went full Drachnian, ooh. Because, <laughs> like, the Emperor could not stop Drachnian. Couldn't kill him. All he could do was imprison him. Like, oof. Yeah, so I, I guess so. So the story basically does go between that stuff. It go, it's like bouncing between um, the sisters of silence and uh, the the mechanicus gentlemen's, and then the baroness, and then in bet- in sparsed in between this, we have little shots to raw getting visions from the emperor and uh, Drachnian basically being like a boogeyman murdering stuff in the webway. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. Yeah, and you're essentially just, just getting like yeah, you're just getting like battle reports about how the webway is going, and it's it's like just a lot of war councils, and then like you said, just a lot of visions between the emperor and Ra, and it's just oh that oh. So and you, I, <laughs> you remember when Drachnian attacked that Skatari guy? Oh yeah, yeah, and then the Skatari uh, had to just instantly send uh, the message to. Uh, to to whoever, but that's what it looks yeah, like, yeah. apparently. That's the drawing. Oh, wow. Drachnian. <laughs> Man, that's, uh, yeah, I mean, that 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 works because the uh, the Skatari instantly got turned into, like, 80 pieces, and the last feeling he had was getting digested by Drachnian. Yep. So, yeah. Dying pretty horribly. Yep, he had no fun. That was no, not he did not. Mm-mm. So and and really, I guess what it comes down to for this book is because I look as I mentioned before, I looked at the old like people reviews when it came out Mm -hmm. and most people were either very intrigued or very upset. Um, The people Uh, that were upset were like, I cannot believe the emperor nearly died to a a single demon. Um, I mean, it's a pretty important demon, though. Like this is the first murder that's like 
been feasting in in the webway and chaos though so like i don't mind that there's like this crazy first demon that like kind of sort of one-ups the emperor and is just like this looming threat that they don't know how to deal with like they have no idea what's going to happen if 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 dragnian ever gets free again i don't mind it either but i know that there were some people annoyed with that um Mm -hmm. but most people were more so annoyed with the reveal that the emperor could not give a flying fuck about his sons oh i i'm i'm glad we 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 brought this up yeah because he um what is it Roz? like oh how come how come you let the primarchs uh call you father because that that just doesn't seem like something you would do and he's like yeah well you know fucking pinocchio called geppetto dad you know, it's because because he made him. It doesn't mean he loves him. He's, he's this creator. What else would he call me? And it's like, oh, oh man, he doesn't love his sons at all. He doesn't think any, he. That's why he's such a bad dad. It's because he doesn't think he's a dad. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Um, what, what's this? Oh, you want to read Shy's thing here? Oh, sure. Uh, yeah, as for DK's question of making no friends but not liking the book, you actually might make some friends but not the ones you want. Oh no. Oh, lovely. There are plenty of reasons to hate this book, but there are quite a few people who unironically think the Emperor never did anything wrong and hate this book for portraying him in any kind of negative way. Oh, so, no, this, I like this book's portrayal of the Emperor because now I'm full Team Chaos, dude. I hate the Emperor. I think he is a horrendous tyrant. Oh, absolutely. Well, the worst. And that was, that was like part of his spiel in one of his visions to Ra, right? Was like, humanity kind of, sort of needs a tyrant to funnel them in the right direction. Otherwise they're just going to go off and, and they're all just going to be like religious zealots doing their own crazy chaos nonsense. And without him there to sort of funnel it in and Ra's like, wow, the hubris of this guy, what the, um, but yeah, he basically calls himself a necessary evil, right? Like he, he thinks he is, he needs to be a tyrant for humanity's sake. Right. And he he specifically is like religion cannot be allowed because if you start doing that, it opens up a pathway for warp entities to cause problems. Oh, yeah, 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 Um, yeah. Chaos will reign supreme if you let religion run wild with humanity. Yeah. Completely ignoring the concept that it's not about just removing it entirely, but more about like the correct guidance. Yeah. Yeah. Like like you don't just tell them no. You, 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 (laughs) You put them in the right path. Or, or, you know, mm-hmm. knowledge is power and maybe b- putting them in ignorance may not be the good idea. Also, no. also, I, while I do think this is both cool and up, the simple fact that um, the bloody, that uh, Zephon the Blood Angel was watching the custodians fight and being like, they're really good at killing Astartes. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, yeah. And he's like, is that what they were? He's like, is that what they were made for? It. Excuse me, are custodians made to kill Astartes? What? I, I'm yeah. pretty positive that custo- that custodians were were prepped to murder all the Astartes, much like <laughs> the Thunder Warriors, and and that's put me on another level of wow. I don't like the Emperor. Yeah. So so, in my understanding, Shai's message correct that there are people that were just like, oh yeah, the Emperor can do no wrong and screw this book because they portrayed him in a negative light. That's shocking. That is shocking. Because I was going to say, knowing what I know about the Emperor, even before reading this book, right? It's like the Emperor is still not a good guy, right? Like he's a terrible dad. Not exactly the best leader either uh, when you look at all of the Primarchs. Um, So I... (sighs) Yeah, I I didn't realize there were people that were just wholeheartedly emperor's the greatest long live the emperor he's never done anything bad like that's actually a little shocking to me I I honestly think that it's it makes him interesting as a a little more interesting as a character because he is so um like how can a person possibly lead a, the the empire of humans without at all even being human like the guy is so above the concept of humanity he's so oh yeah so far removed from that that idea that uh that overarching concept or how could he possibly understand humanity when he is so so detached he is so far removed from anything 
mortal human. Was it in this book or a different book where they specifically were like, oh, the Imperium of Man, you're not even led by a man. That thing might as well be a god on the Golden Throne. You guys are crazy for following him. I don't actually know. I don't know which one that was, but mm. I, I believe you, whatever it could be. Yeah, I yeah, no, I, I actually liked... So the, the lore reveals of the book are pretty significant, I believe. And I think that's part of the, uh, the major intrigue. Yeah. Uh, it definitely. was, I mean, we definitely learned more about the emperor. We learned about the beginning of the thousand psyker sacrifices, mm -hmm. um, Magnus's folly war in the web way, all that kind of thing. Um, we learned more about Ark and land. Like, like there <laughs> is, this book is just, chock full of lore reveals yeah it's it's not completely without merit but it's it's probably the weakest book we've read so far oh i disagree i think creed takes that uh cake really yeah because i the so so we're not huge on this book not because the lore and stuff doesn't align with how we feel it's because the first two-thirds of the book are incredibly slow and dull and boring yeah they are and for me, the last third kind of just a little bit makes up for it, but not enough. Yeah, the last um, third was very good. That's 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 fair. The last third had me pretty pretty enraptured. Um, uh, okay, question then for for you: What is, mm -hmm. in your opinion, the best scene from the book? Your favorite scene? Let's uh, let's, let's, let's get let's get a positive in here. Okay, that's easy. Uh, when Zephan comes out of nowhere and drives his sword into the shoulder of uh, Drachnian towards the end, and he's like, he's finally, he's finally got his chance to fight him, and he's doing his thing. He leaves that bandolier of grenades right the hell on the back of his neck, and just, and he just comes in like a wrecking ball. That was that was that was pog, dude. That's I that was it. I was uh, I was about to say very close to that. For me, it was the conversation between Zephan and Ark and Land right before that. <laughs> Those two together were so great. They I, were great. <laughs> oh, my God. I almost wish there was a whole book of just those two rolling around, just doing whatever as like a as just sort of a side book. Oh, my God. That, that's the greatest pair. That is almost that's almost up there with um, Trazen and Orican. Almost. They, they were a lot of fun, but I, mm -hmm. I really liked Arkin Land's uh, explanation of him being like the bird that can't breathe. Oh, and I, that's and I was like, right. that is so depressing, dude. Oh, my God. Yeah, it is. That's right. Because he was like, oh, have, haven't you ever wondered why they'd why they'd bring a blood angel that can't fight to a giant fight? And it's like, ooh, I didn't think about that, but ooh, ooh, he's a he's a coal miner's bird. Oh no, that's yeah, that's depressing. That's sad. Mm -hmm. And they they never actually explain why his name is Bringer of Sorrow. Yeah, they didn't. They kept bringing it up. Like Ark and Land brought it up, and one of the custodians bring it up is like, oh hey, you're Bringer of Sorrow. Why do they call you that? And nobody ever. They never really expanded on that. Uh, interestingly enough, there is another short story book by Aaron Dembski Bowden called Bringer of Sorrow, which oh. it says at the height of the Webway War, renowned Mechanicum uh, or Arkan Land ventured into the alien labyrinth. Uh, blah 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 blah. Um, he has fixed the greatest challenge to repair the damage done to Zephon, and uh, partly as a result of the tech priest's own tinkering. And it was like, oh. Another extra, an extra, extra little uh, thing. It's apparently it's a um, a really short story, like a tiny little ten minute thing or something. But mm, gotcha. it's it's still something, I guess. Yeah, they were such a good pair, man. Damn. I I that part was great when when he when we like cut to the next scene where he was firing his bolt. I had this huge grin on my face, just right? like a dumbass in the middle of the gym, like listening to the final bits of the book, like ah yay he's doing a thing. Yeah, Zephan finally getting into the fight was just like let's go. That was easily the most hype moment of the book. E well yeah yeah definitely. I was mm -hmm. I was very pleased with it. It was lovely. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm, those I, uh, blood angels let's go let's go blangles let's go blangles but yeah i guess i guess really it, it is, does come down to a lot of the of the lore do you like the lore that was presented here or not i like the custodians 
I enjoy mm-hmm. how ridiculously strong they are, and I like the reveal that they're incredibly good at killing space marines. <laughs> and that just kind of gives me this, like, oh. It's very off-putting how good the custodians are at killing space marines. Yeah, yeah. Ironically, in on the tabletop, they are also really good at killing space marines. Oh, boy. Oh, um, boy. A Custodians versus space marines in the 41st millennium, maybe? Um, I, but I think a lot of the annoyances I came with, especially at the War in the Web way, was that there was a ton of stuff set up for this area, and the payoffs were kind of muted. Yeah. Like, oh, we're going to set up this whole uneasy alliance between the Mechanicum and the Custodes, and the Mechanicum decide, well, god darn it, I we didn't get what we want, we're leaving, and we're going to walk right into the warp and die without <laughs> realizing it. And, Pretty much, yeah, yeah. And then the Archimandrite gets taken over by uh, Drachnian just mm-hmm. to have a cool, like, final boss fight type thing. Which, it was pretty cool, because uh, the was- Archimandrite... But the possessed one, anyway, goes, it runs roughshod over everything. Custodians, sisters, nothing stands in that thing's way. No, it, it really doesn't. And it's it's fun. Like, like that part, that whole thing is, is enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then there's random bits where, like, okay, Drachnian takes over a titan. And that's yeah. crazy and cool. And all it was was to watch another titan fight a titan and then get shot by the titan he took over and then the part was over and i'm like why do we even bother yeah there yeah a lot there's a lot of times like that where it's just it just it just seems like there's a lot of unnecessary like exposition and fluff in the book like there's so much exposition like there'll be a time when like the emperor's like hello i'm the emperor and then it'll go on for like eight hours expositioning me and it's like please just move on like i feel like there's so much fat that could have been cut from this story i I, i'm thinking a little bit back to like the night lords trilogy because it was also written by adb Mm -hmm. and he did often cut to seemingly unimportant characters and then often just killed them um (laughs) that's but that's true I think that what it did, it served the story in a lot of ways. Like, I don't remember the name of him, but he was the pilot of the ship that Octavia was on in the first, like, hour of the first book. And that whole thing of, like, a space marine craft is coming in. Why aren't they listening to our hails? It's getting close. <laughs> we have come for you. And then it blows up the ship in orbit, and Octavia's on the ground like, oh, my God. Yeah. And, like, that part <clears throat> at least serves some kind of purpose, like setting it all up, setting up the Night Lords as, like, the villain, well, yeah. kind of... Um, but for a lot of these, it just felt like, like there was a lot of the fabricator general. What was his name? His name was Kane, wasn't it? Yeah, actually, it was, wasn't it? And Ark and Land did not like Kane, and yeah, yeah. But like he was there, and he had a lot of screen time in the beginning, and he didn't do anything at the end. Yeah, I was trying to remember anything that Kane did towards the second half of the book. Like he was he the one that set up that uneasy uh, truce where it was like, yeah, as long as you guys make sure to protect the webway to Mars, we'll help you. Was that him? Did he set that up? Yeah, yeah, that was that okay. was the main the main thing was like, if you, we, you need to help us retake sacred Mars, if you want us to give you your fancy general. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gotcha. I don't. Yeah. And it just it kind of like set up. And then the payoff was at the end, but it was like super minute and didn't necessarily matter much. Um, yeah. I don't know. There, there was a lot of issues like that I found, which is unfortunate because some of the characters, particularly Land and, and Zephon, were really, really good. Yeah. I also wonder if I didn't enjoy the book as much because like there like there were there was a lot of new lore. But then there's a lot of lore that, like, if you're really already into 40k, right? Like, you already kind of know the lore what? that's happening. Like what? Well, like, uh, like when they're like, "Oh yeah, we're examining Angron," and it's like, "Oh yeah, I I can't take the nails out," and it's like, "Well yeah, I I kind of knew that," but I guess like if you're new to 40k, you wouldn't know that, and that would be super interesting to be like, "Oh well, hey, the Emperor did try to help him out," and that might be like an interesting little 
plot tidbit. Whereas, like for me, I'm just like, oh, okay, let's 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 move on. I I know this stuff. Let's just right. Well, so there's three possibilities on that. One is that that could be where we figured that part out in general. And so that could be the reveal of that to begin with, which is like, mm. that's where yeah. how we know to be start with. So there's that. True, the second true. could be the way. Um, uh, yeah. Also, we're pretty deep in the Horace Heresy series to begin with. So. Oh, um, <laughs> so a new person wouldn't just jump right into the Master of Mankind yeah. book. Uh, OK. Um, also, well, it's, just, it's the Emperor book. So maybe someone would figure, you know, I want to learn about the guy that runs the show. And I don't know. Oh, the other option is that the the scene is meant to show the Emperor's thoughts on Angron, like a wounded yeah. Primarch is still a Primarch. Mm-hmm. Or you could say the scene's purpose was to show off Arkan Land and his the fact that he's smart enough that the Emperor calls upon his expertise. True, true. So it depends on, on how, what you take from the scene, yeah. like why could it have been the way it was. Although Arkan Land kind of just looked at Angron and he was like, yeah, no, you're right, there's nothing you can do. Yeah, he was basically like, yeah, the butcher's nails don't just rewire the brain. It like replaces chunks of the brain. Yeah, it's been compl- it's not just coiled around his brain. It has become his brain. Also, if you'd like to see uh, <clears throat> an image of Ark in the land, this is what he looks like with that big ass goatee. That is ex- literally exactly what I thought he looked like. That is exactly what I said exactly he would look like. Exactly with his dumb little monkey. T- <laughs> The dumb little monkey that was it Zephon that was afraid that he would just start shitting all over the place. I'm sorry. I just saw this meme right afterwards. Why? Yes, I do believe that all space marines are abominations in the primary project. <laughs> the Messiah's worst idea. Oh, land. Oh, Arkin land. I love land. He is just the best. He is. He is a pretty great character. I'm 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 glad we have gotten a better look at Arkin land because before this, all I really knew was land. Raider, and I thought it was a literal like land raider, and you know, learning that it's his name because he made it. Though uh, I must say, I did find the end of Raw to be a little bit interesting, kind of oh, trapping yep. Drachnian in his body and sending mm-hmm. him off. Yeah, yeah. Then he ran. He ran so far away. He ran so far. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he did. But he like did. that was that was pretty. Like I was like, okay, uh, I, I I was kept thinking to myself, Raw seems like a baller. Why do I not ever see him after this part of the game? And now I know why. Yep. And humble beginnings for Ra, uh, son of a water thief. Yeah. Uh, the opening also had Constantine Valdor murder a lady for stealing the <laughs> for last stealing bit of, water. Yeah. Stealing the, not just the water, the last water on Terra, the yeah. final water. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all this because i stole water yeah that was that was kind of funny and yep. constantine valdor is quite the guy yeah he is definitely a guy that is I, that is for sure <laughs> i also think that this is a pretty good book if you like the sisters of silence they, they're showing off oh, as, yeah, yeah, as yeah, quite yeah. terrifying oh yeah definitely with all the signing and the yeah didn't didn't uh, uh when he uh possessed the What's the big machine again? The Arca, Arca Oh, the Arca Mandrite. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't he killing sisters? And he was like, whoa, this is great. I feel yeah. so juiced up every time I kill one. And then all my chaos buddies get juiced up because these soulless witches are gone. Oh, this is hype. So, yeah, the, the sisters do come across as rather important. I wonder how the how Drachnian got put into a sword. That I'm I'm. I'm very curious too because he had to, for him to be an Abaddon sword, somebody had to kill Ra, right? Uh, or somebody had to extract him from Ra, right? Basically, yeah, yeah. Shy says she has a sort of an answer because. Ooh, I want to know. Whoa! Oh, go ahead, dude. <laughs> All right, Shy says at some point, Drachnian was bound in the labyrinth beneath the Tower of Silence on Uralan, where the Chaos Gods themselves lock away their secrets. Abaddon was led to the Tower of Silence during his first Black Crusade in 781.M31, and, after fighting off constructs of dark energy that serves as the Tower's guardians, entered the mirrored heart of Uralan beneath the crypts. Wandering a haunted labyrinth of impossible angles that was continuously made and unmade as he walked, Abaddon encountered a towering figure wreathed in golden light. 
the golden figure led him to the center of the labyrinth where a shard of shifting darkness hung. When Abaddon grasped it, Drachnian took the form of a fearsome blade. So how did he get how did he get into the labyrinth? Like how did he, how did he get out of Ra is kind of my question. But. Well, Ra was shanked through the fucking stomach by the sword. <laughs> true. So Ra true. was Ra was dying. It was more I, of like yeah, a, I guess Ra would be on death's door and it's like, "Hey, yeah. run as far away as you can so that, you know, Drachnian doesn't come back." Yeah, that's fair. For for me, it's more of a um uh land on the grenade. Jump on, mm, like Raw gotcha. was jumping on the grenade, basically. I, you know? I guess for some reason, I when I read the ending, I was like, oh, oh, he's still alive, and he's like, he can recover from his wound because you know he's a custodian, and he was just gonna like continuously go as far away from the Imperium as he could with Drachnian, and just sort of as as long as he lived, Drachnian would be imprisoned. I guess I didn't take it as he he would die soon after. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, well, I don't know how soon after it was because this is Abaddon. I don't know, like first Black Crusade. That was seven hundred and eighty-one years after, I think. Oh, <laughs> so I mean, it took him a bit. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It did take him a little while. Yeah, at least, at least I think so. Well, so is is Drachnian constantly trying to like take over Abaddon, and Abaddon is just so forceful and willful that he just fends him off? Is that uh, how that sword works? I think so. Demons always want to take over their host. That's just like the way it is. Naturally, yeah. Um, but I think Abaddon um, wets blood so often, and Drachnian <laughs> drinks the souls of the dead so often. He's kind of like, you know, I'm actually pretty chill with my new crib. I've got a good deal. This is, you know, no reason to interrupt this. Yeah, he feeds me well. I'm I'm eating good in the neighborhood. I think in um in one of the arcs of Omen books, Drachnian is like. Oh, I want to kill, I want to kill, I want to kill. And Abaddon's like, shut up. I'm working on it. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you'll get fed soon. Just chill out. It's like when he was... um, Like a hungry that, little puppy that's like, like, like treats, cat, treats, treats, <laughs> like treats. Like a cat, like when a cat was ready to be fed, walks up to you and it just incessantly goes, meow, meow, <laughs> meow, meow. <laughs> I like how we have denigrated the first murder Cat-nian. of man to a cat me. <laughs> cat me. <laughs> you, you ever seen this video, DK? No, it's Drac Nyan. Oh, shit. Let's He's go. Drac Nyan. Is oh, he... no. Feed me. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> this video is exactly what I imagine it like. I have never seen this video, but yes, exactly. Mm-hmm, Perfect. Mm-hmm. Perfect. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You've done it. Truly, truly, you have done it. Well done. Well done. Oh, I mean, other than that, so, I mean, final consensus overall on the book, like, it certainly got some good lore reveals. It's obviously mm-hmm. a very important book in the Horus Heresy saga because it's the war in the webway. Yeah. Um, the though, impossible city. There's, like, a combination of, of there's two ways you got to look at, like, a, a book this deep in the Horus Heresy trilogy, or not trilogy, good God, quadrillion <laughs> Um, you have to look at it as either a, um, one of the, the books in the series or B as a standalone book. And maybe it hits a little bit harder as a book in the series. Maybe just, um, I don't know what the book before it was. Maybe the book before it was like a purely action one. And this is like kind of a breather. That's true. You know, I hadn't thought about it as simply an act in the Horus heresy as a whole. Right, I was looking at it as purely standalone complex. Yeah, that's true. Like, if the book before it is just action from the get go for thirteen hours, just nonstop balls to wall action, this actually would make a nice interlude. Um. So Shai says, "Would you say, Bricky, that if you were new and want to learn about Ems, just read the Last Church?" Yeah, I'd say the last church, it, it's not only shorter, but it gets you a better idea of the hubris that the emperor believes in. The um the his his somewhat famous quote of the difference is is I know I'm right is such like a <laughs> is such like a malignant fucking saying. Oh yeah. It's like everyone else who tried this kind of thing failed and were awful people. And he's like, yeah, but I'm different. And he's like, no, apparently not. <laughs> I mean, you do you do still get that vibe from this book, but you you, you got to trudge through a lot of stuff to get there. It, it's com- it's also like completely reducing the concept that the entire Eldar race had 
a multitude of gods that were, I'm assuming, roughly emperor strength in, in various ways, and they still all died. Yeah, they, they still got genocided. Like, they had their emperors, and it failed mm-hmm. them. The, he's oh my, a good oh my God. leader. The Catan, the Necrons had their emperors, <laughs> and they, they failed them. Looking like a star god. Mm-hmm. Let's rephrase that, actually. They didn't fail them. They killed them. Yeah. They killed their, their emperors. But it's like, I, I, I'm i honestly, reading this book makes me want to like chaos more. <laughs> yeah, the emperor does not come across in a good light in this one. Yeah. I, <laughs> I mean, I don't like chaos. Chaos is is. I, I would is equally pretty terrible in all sorts of ways. Like they're not better in any way, but I'm I'm almost kind of like chaos is so hateful and spiteful, and I kind of like that vibe. Mm-hmm. I like that vibe of like you know what, you know what I'm I'm wrong. Sure, I don't really care. Lorgar, go flay that slave. <laughs> go 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 summon a demon. I don't give a shit, Dad. Fuck you. And if yeah, I can't yeah. save the from your failings, Father, let the galaxy burn. It uh, it it really pushes the idea that there are no good guys in 40k. There, like even even especially the Imperium. This is your sanctimonious prick leader who is willing to sacrifice a thousand psychers a day. Uh, there, there's no good guys. Are we the baddies? Yes. Whoever said it? Yes. In 40k, you are the baddies. You know, which is also just hilarious because you can f- absolutely, uh, if you're like, God, I hate all these factions. I don't want to be a chaos slave and I don't want to be a, a corpse worshiping asshole. Then just play the orcs, my guy. Yeah, they're just having a good time looking for a good crumpin. Or or, or play the crons or the nids. Yeah, you know, nids like are you just got, hungry. You got plenty of good options still. Yeah, yeah you do. You do. You do. Anywho, um, I think that generally wraps it up. Uh, we yeah. might not make a whole lot of friends with this, but, uh, you know, yeah. that's okay. It's yeah. not every book can be a smash hit. And and, uh, and just because we don't like it doesn't mean you don't have to not like it. You can still like it. Your opinion is still valid if you love this book. It just didn't do shit for me. It was uh, the problems with the book where it was not the... Uh, not not the reveals, not the uh, overarching like uh, explanations or anything. It was just the pacing. It was just really yeah. bad pacing. Really that did get better pacing. at the end. Yeah, yeah, I I would agree. It's it's that that pacing, trudging through that first eight hours of just like exposition heavy, like oh yeah, it's it's tough. It's tough, and it just doesn't do a lot. It's just yeah. A total side note, you know, um, uh, the the custodian dreadnought was a contemptor, and and so he was like the egg dreadnought. Oh, he, really? I didn't realize yeah. he was an egg. Sag- Sagittarius, right? Sagittarius, and so he was like, I'm just imagining him after getting smacked by Drakni and falling on his <laughs> big egg shell to just sound like this. Well, he they they said he did seem like he was a turtle that fell over on its back and couldn't really <laughs> move did. well. <laughs> they did. He's like he, with the grace of a fat turtle or whatever. Yeah, he's like, help me, guys. I'm falling and I can't get up. Roll me mm. over. Roll me over. That was pretty oh, funny. man. All right. Anyway. Uh, n- oh, next book. Next book. Next book. Next book. Next book. Next book. What do we do? Oh, do you have shit. any ideas? Do we have any suggestions? What What's a What's a pretty popular one that keeps getting suggested of us? Well, I'd like to. I'd like to maybe do a little less Marines. Okay. Um, but then again, like there's still so many Marine books. Uh, hmm. you want to just figure it out next time. Yeah, I, my mind. I mean, my what my mind was Hell's Reach in the beginning, but Hell's Reach is a Marine book. Oh, um, that's right. That was a very heavily requested book for a while, wasn't it? Yeah, I'd like, I'd like a Xenos or a Guard one. See if we can find something okay. neat there. L- Xenos or Guard, eight hours or less. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> this one was was a hefty boy at a at, at a what was it twelve hours or eleven? It was somewhere in that ballpark. It was a lot. So eight hours or less, Xenos or Guard. We'll figure it out on the next episode. Yeah, definitely. Also, I wouldn't blame you for that one, Shy. Like Master of Mankind was one that had been suggested a lot too. So I don't think that's Be like careful a, oh, what you wish for. 
Yeah. <laughs> you just might get it.